So welcome back for our second video um, on Active Directory and just giving you a little bit of an overview. Um, last time we covered the groups um, just really briefly and now we're going to talk about um, these organizational units, um, what they're used for, the proper use of an organizational unit, and just a couple other little things. Again, this is not an in-depth um, coverage of Active Directory. This is just to get you familiar with the basics so that you can continue on with the tutorials. Um, so one of the kind of misconceptions within Active Directory in designing a Windows infrastructure is that security should be placed on organiza organizational units. This is not entirely accurate. Um, security can be placed on organizational units uh, and many many times in many environments you will see that that is where it's placed but ideally security should be placed on your security groups so what are these organizational units for are they just folders for things to uh, to organize things no uh, the purpose of organizational units is right here at the top of the list when you right click an organizational unit right there delegate control a lot of times system administrators become overwhelmed because they have so many responsibilities in their job and but yet they want to guard their network and protect their network and say nobody else can touch this this is my domain this is really a counterintuitive attitude um, the whole purpose of organizational units is so that you can delegate control to responsible people to help you manage your infrastructure so we're gonna go through an example of this so in this accounting um, organizational unit that we worked with before, we are going to go through this delegate control wizard. And as you can see, it brings up a very nice user interface. Okay, And we are going to add a group here. So we are delegating control over the accounting group. So what do you think we're going to do? We are going to train our accounting manager. Okay, and Let's populate this list. We're going to do accounting manager so we're gonna select that group there so this is the group that we're going to delegate control to and you can look see create delete and manage user accounts reset user passwords oh man I am sick and tired of changing user passwords so we're definitely gonna have the accounting manager do that read all user information maybe that's something for H, uh, HR create and delete and manage groups no maybe we don't want that um, manage group policy links no nope. modify membership of a group maybe we would want that what if there's a couple of accounting groups maybe there's an accounting group for San Francisco maybe there's one for New York so maybe we just want to select this mm create delete no we don't want any of these but you know what we can take care of a lot of problems and you know what we just want him to be able to read information we can take care of a lot of problems just by a couple of things if the HR person tells the accounting manager to create a new user because he's getting hired we'll give him that too now I'm not saying this is how you should set up accounting you would have to you know really think about um, you know the users in the groups and the types of permissions that you trust your accounting manager with so this is not a complete example of what you should do it's just just an example so gonna click next now one thing that you should actually do before you click finish you need to write this down uh, one thing that this does not do so if we were to run through this wizard again and we were to de delegate control it should actually not show you what is already applied so look, we're gonna run this delegate control wizard again okay click next we are going to add accounting managers so we do managers okay I'm gonna go next now look none of that information is there do you see this a lot of people don't know this um, so be really mindful so if you delegate control in your organization it is imperative that you document what you delegate so we're gonna cancel out of here okay but now anybody who is in the accounting manager group and in this case if we look at the members this is Dennis Arbor so if Dennis 
logs into the system, he will be able to change and reset all of these user passwords. And guess what? That means less work for us. Um, so that's that is really the actual design goal of an organizational unit is it is to delegate authority. Another thing, it won't be so much. We won't talk about it too much in our videos, but Active Directory sites and services. Um, it's a little bit complicated, but if you have, let's say, different offices, one in New York, one in Chicago, things like that, you would actually create different sites. You would create a site for New York, you create a site for Chicago, maybe one for LA, and this would help divide the network among physical locations. But you don't really need to worry about that too much in a small network. But I just wanted to let you know it's there. The other thing that you have seen is group policy, gpmc.msc. Oh, maybe if I didn't have that there. So group policy is how you enforce security and other things on these organizational units and security groups that you have developed in Active Directory users and computers. And if one of the, there's just a couple things that you can do with group policy. As you saw in our WSUS video, you can have all of your computers updating. Instead of going out to Microsoft for their updates, you can have your WSUS server, and then you approve the patches that you're going to push out to your clients. So that's great. Let's say that you want to upgrade to Windows 7, but your video cards can't handle that nice new arrow interface um, that comes with Windows 7. You can actually set the computers to use the default um, Windows theme. And actually, I can show you an example of this. If I log on, this is a Windows 7 machine, but if I log on here, if I can remember uh, what group policy this is affecting. This should just give me the classic user interface for Windows. Oop. Don't want to do that. Okay, and as you can see, this actually updated from our WSUS server, but this is not the arrow interface. This is the old Windows interface, but this is Windows 7, and I'll just prove that to you. So what you can do, see, Windows 7, right there. Um, so what you can do in order to save processing time, you can force down certain themes to Windows clients. You can stop people from changing their, their background, their desktop background. You can act for security, which is really, really smart, disable USB devices on your network. You can deploy printers through group policy, so you don't have to individually set up printers for workstations. You don't have to have login scripts. That's for more Windows Vista and 7 clients. Um, so group policy is really powerful, and you, we're going to cover this in a lot more depth. So hopefully, between this video and the first video, you really start to understand a little bit about Windows Active Directory. You will have to do reading on your own. You'll have to play with this if you really want to understand the full power. But this will at least get you used to some of the terminology, domain, organizational unit, the user, the security group, workstations, things like that. So thank you for joining us. Um, please come by again and watch our next video. We're probably going to be doing one on printer management. I know that is something that almost every administrator has to do. So check that out. Thanks again for watching windservetoots.com.